This shocked me. I had zero idea this was going to happen. All right, so guys, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. This is your last chance. This is a spoiler review. If you have not watched this, leave. If you have not watched Deadpool and Wolverine, leave now. This is your final warning. This is your final warning. If you have not watched, leave. Spoiler, I'm going to spoil it right now. Boom. Okay, so, let, let, guys, let's be real. The film story was nonsense. I, I, I'm sorry. This is, not, this is not about the film story, about, okay, like, the way the different timelines, TVA, we now have the TVA, the secret timeline. I'm sorry. It was garbage. This was about the experience. This was about the cameos. What people will be talking about after this film are about the cameos and the reaction to the cameos of, and how did you keep this secret? So let's just first start with this, bro. I had a feeling about this one. I had a feeling about this one because guys are like, okay, human touch, human So this one, because I'm going to be building up to the, the cameos of like shock value, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So this was one where, okay, I was like, okay, cool. But I already had... Um, things of like, okay, this is it's probably going to be around. And you could definitely tell that... Because um, look, look at how he, he, he got killed. Like, Cassandra Nova like pretty much also lubricated him <laughs> easily. So I think that Chris Evans was one of those guys where, okay, look, man, fine, I'll do because the film didn't do well. It wasn't that big of a, of a hit. So I think he was cool and like, look, kill me off. And also what's interesting is... You see him up here, like in the I don't know what, I forgot what it's called. It's the, um, the the void, and the twentieth century Fox logo is like submerged in the ground. So just how the Fox logo has pretty much been destroyed, and him appearing there, showing that look, Fox messed up. This is a new era. That was there. So look, it was no, it was it was cool because the funny thing was, I it wouldn't make sense if it was Cap. So it wouldn't make sense because I like, know that's something different. So, but. It was just sort of, it was interesting how they lodged it together because when you see Deadpool in the, in the TV, he bas and they show images of Cap, oh my gosh, Cap. So he thinks it's Captain America, but like really it's Human Touch, but it's like, wait a minute. Like, but, so that's like breaking the fourth wall of like, okay, but it looks like Cap America, who is this really? And they just see him get destroyed. So look, this was cool, but I wasn't that shocked or blown away by this um, cameo, you know, because again, Reading again, this just shows you how good they were at, at keeping the secrets. Because for the other cameos, I was shocked. And I'm a guy that spends a lot of time in internet forums. So the fact, so this was the only one where I was like, okay, yeah, I sort of had an inkling of this, so it didn't really shock me as much. So this was cool. It was cool. Now, again, I had hints, but this was still surprising. So there, I, I heard rumors about um, Ben Affleck's Daredevil. So I was, and so you have to look at the issues. Remember, Ben Affleck and, oh gosh, and, Jen, and Jen, Jennifer Garner, they divorced. So now I don't really know what their relationship is right now. So I was thinking that they, I, I doubt they'd get both because I'm not sure where, what the relationship is like now. So either you get Ben Affleck as Daredevil or you'd get Jennifer Garner as Electra. I don't think you'd, you'd get both. So, but I was hearing more about them getting Ben Affleck as Daredevil. So when they go, so when Electra, Electra came through, I was like, oh, Electra. So I was like, okay. So this was pretty surprising. And also remember as well, it's like, you see, here's the thing. So there, was, so this was surprising because I thought if you were to cho choose between Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner to come back, in a super outfit, oh, Ben Affleck. He was just recently Batman and he's still into it. Jennifer Gunn, bro, this was, I think this was 04. So she has been way past this whole superhero stuff. So she's not even sniffed the superhero thing. So th why this is so surprising is, and we're more surprised than Chris Evans is, she has been, bro, for like almost 20. I think, I think Daredevil was 04. I think Daredevil was 04. So for about 20 years, she's been away from superhero stuff. So to get her back, in a superhero outfit and stuff, 
that would have taken some convincing. So the fact that she actually agreed to, to do it was like, okay, that's actually pretty cool. So this was surprising because I didn't think Jennifer Garner would agree to be, to first of all get into a superhero outfit and be back in a superhero movie. So this was a cool one. So I think, so basically if Ben Affleck was Daredevil, I'd be like, okay, cool. This was a more, this was a more surprising cameo because of how unlikely I thought Jennifer Garner would actually agree to do this. So this was cool. Now, this was surprising. This was surprising. So, yes, Channing Tatum has always wanted to be Gambit, and he was lobbying to do Gambit rather than that bomb-ass Taylor Kitchen X-Men Origins. This caught me completely off guard. This could be completely off guard because I was I did not think that he'd basically. I did not hear a single inkling about this. So it is amazing they kept this secret. Because I had no idea. So when he came, I was like, what? What did the Chinese do Captain Crow? Um, because he's always wanted to do this. And he, and remember, I think he even came close to having a Gambit film around the X-Men Origins time, but it sort of um, fell further through. You see, and I see, this way it gets, like, I get it. It is very comic accurate in terms of the um, outfit and stuff. And look, the action scene, remember, so when, we, when they have that action scene, I was like, bro, man, this guy's power's actually pretty damn good. We know with the cards that are exploding. But the outfits didn't really fit him. You know, it just seemed a bit too, uh, like, I, th I think they could have had a better design for the outfit because it, basically it seemed as if he was actually struggling to, to breathe in the, out the outfits. But I think, basically, when you watch it, Rather than like, oh, that doesn't go, you're so blown away that like, wait, it's Channing Tatum, it's Gambit, because bro, this is one of the most popular X-Men cards. Like, if you go beyond Wolverine, so if you, if you think about popularity, I would say Wolverine is the most popular, then I'll say Storm. You could argue Gambit is the third most popular X-Men. In terms of guys who love, so Wolverine, oh, by by far, then it's Storm. So I would say it's Wolverine, Storm, and then Gambit. I think it's because of his character, his personality, how he speaks, and his powers, which are just very, very cool. Like everyone plays cards and just and how they represented his powers in this was cool. And I'll be real with you, like Channing Tatum, who I don't read as an actor, he is I. Like in terms of getting the Cajun accent and everything, I think just improve like the. The suit just needs, he just, it just needs better fitting. I think improve the, the suit, be a bit more imaginative with the suit. The suit's just, it's coming accurate, but it just needs to be a better fit. Bro, I'll tell you right now, a lot of people will be climbing for a, a Gambit film. 100%. 1,000%. Guys will be like, all right, Channing Tatum, give Channing Tatum a Gambit film. So, but I think what, and this is what I'll, I'll, obviously ultimately where I get to X-Men. This is building up to X-Men. So if you're building up to an X-Men film, you, you, I think you, you have your gambit now. You have your gambit. So um, that's the thing. Now, and I just need your... Um, oh, gosh, what's that? No, no. What's... what's oh, my gosh. Ju no, it's not, it's not Jubilee. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm going crazy. Oh my, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Rogue. Rogue. <laughs> so all you need is a rogue. And remember, let's be real. Rogue in the, I think it was Anna Paquin who was Rogue in the X-Men films. Let's be real. Rogue is a sexy redhead. So we're going to need Kurt. We're going to need, need it's a TNA. We're going to need some TNA for Rogue. Okay, let's, let's make Rogue sex again. Make Rogue sex again. What's that? Ums, um, um, umsa, no, no, Mr. Sa. Mr. Sa. Make Rogue sex again. Make Rogue sex again, Mr. Sa. So yeah, now. This, this was, a, I told you, I didn't like the, the film. And I still don't like the film. I think the film was, was a break. This shocked me. I had zero idea this was going to happen. And I am so, so here's the thing. This was ruined for, for, for me. Which is why I knew that I had to go and So Because on, on Twitter, Chris Evans was trending. I was like, damn it. So this was, so yes, this was ruined for, for me. Even if I already, I already had an inkling, he was already, he might have been there. It was fully ruined because it was, I saw, I saw it trending. <laughs> when Blade walked through, I was like, what? <laughs> huh? Shh, shh. 
shocking. Absolutely shocking. Absolutely. I mean, I'll get back to shocked. How they can. I can, bro, I can only imagine how some people will react in some cinemas, man. And I can only imagine how the reaction is going to be in, I mean, my Lord. When this guy, I was like, what? What? And basically, I just wish that people could just, and, and it's going to be on, on YouTube for, for sure, people's reactions when this guy walks through. Because, bro, shocking. Absolutely shocking that he came through. He came through. So, so first, so first of all, I was like, my brain was, this was the ease by a country freaking mile highlight of the film. Highlight of the film by a freaking country mile, like 100%. I did not like the suits. You see, for me, see, this is not where, and I'm getting this picky because I'm such a fan of, bro, I literally, I just got the 4K DVD, like literally like yesterday. So this is where I'm now going to be nitpicking now. I did not like the suits fitting. Guys, he's older. It's 2024. Let's update it. So for me, make him bald. Because Snipes now, he's now bald. The, the whole, no, make him bald. Give him a, give him his long black trench coat. Now whole thing, similar to Gambit, the fits on the, on the outfits, I, I did not like it, bro. So just give him his long black trench coat to, to make him look bulkier. Make him bald. Make, make, make him bald. Boom. And then that would have looked better. So, but I, but, I get it. Remember, this film was we're not about making a film. It's about we want to make the comic book fans happy. And we want the characters to look as comic accurate as possible. So, and that's just one of my issues with it was that this was too much of a fanboy film of like, no, how does he look like in the comics? Let us make it as close to the comics as possible. Even if it doesn't look good on the film, as long as it looks close to the comics, the fans will love it. Bro, the fans are going to Below their head. Fans are going to erupt when they see this guy. The fact that it's nice because you have to understand it. He started it. Blade started this whole thing. In 1998, that Blade film is still the best comic book film. Hate me all you want. Attack me. Hate me. I don't care. I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. I'm, not, say, I'm not afraid. I'll say it. Blade. Blade 1. Forget about Blade 2, Blade 3. <laughs> Blade 1 is a better film than Dark Knight. I said it. I said it. Blade 1 is a better film than Dark Knight. Sue me. I said it. That is an amazing film. Snipes gives a superb, amazing performance. One of the best comic book. Snipes in Blade 1, in terms of acting, action, performance, best comic book movie protagonist performance. Best comic book movie protagonist performance. Snipes in Blade, in Blade One. So, look, as I was like, what? This is, this is crazy. So, look, okay, another big one. And this, this is one that, so, see, the Blade, that is going to get everyone crazy. This is going to be the biggest thing that everyone is going to go crazy about. This. Everyone, everyone people will lose their minds. It was cute. It was cute, but again, similar to me, I don't need, I don't need this. I don't need this. Like, I really don't. For me, it's like the comic book is the comic book. The film is the film. Now, there were scenes where, oh, this actually looks pretty cool. So there are scenes where, like, he's talking to Deadpool. I was like, watch me, man. you know, this could work. But then as it goes in, I was like, okay, no, this looks stupid. So for, like, a minute or two, I was like, oh, this actually looks pretty cool. After was okay, no, this look like sorry, it, this is just my honest view. It look it looks stupid. In the in a comic book, it looks great. In a film, it looks great. In a film, it look it looks stupid. But people are gonna lose their minds. Because remember, people have been asking for this for Batman that's give Batman his cowl with the white eyes, like the comics. But the fact that they first of all he wore the mask and with the white eyes, people will lose their minds. People lose their minds. And that just shows that this film is going to make a lot of money because there are guys who are going to watch this film like 20 times because it's such a homage to comic book fans. A group of hardcore comic book fans will watch the movie like 20, 20 times. And especially the fact that they did this, people, 
Bro, guys are going to watch this film like two or three times this, this in, in the first weekend. It, there are people that will watch this film at least 10 or 20 times, 100%. There are some comic book fans, especially Wolverine fans, where there are most of, they will watch this about 20, 30 times because of the fact that they did this and they achieved this, man. So, and look, here's the thing, man. Can, like, when does this guy quit? When does, when does this guy quit? Because, so they say something in the film where, so um, Deadpool keeps saying, oh, you're going to keep doing this until you're 90. And I think they want to keep rolling this guy out. And then I think, so at the end, Deadpool says, okay, so we'll, 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 we'll see you again. And he says, probably not. So I don't know whether that is a him say, okay, I think I'm done. Hugh Jackman, you've been doing this since 2000. It's done. And guys, here's the thing. This is my thing for recasting. People say, oh, no, don't recast. Don't recast. Don't, don't recast. This is why I say you, re you recast. In 2000, Hugh Jackman was an unknown. Hugh Jackman was an unknown. Brand Singer gave that role to an unknown, which I think is great because it comes back to my thing of X-Men because X-Men is coming. It's coming right now. And X-Men is now, has that luster based on the outstanding X-Men 97. If I'm casting X-Men, all unknowns. So nobody has any baggage with with it because a big thing of that Hugh Jackman casting was he was unknown. No, nobody knew about him. It was just some dude from Australia. No one knew ab about him. So I think that's when you're not casting the X-Men, especially casting Wolverine and my, please cast somebody who is no taller than 5'7 or 5'8. People say, oh, it's short guy. Oh, I found there's something in the film that I found very, I don't know. So, so, so dead. So basically, you know, you see Deadpool going into all of the different dimensions because he's trying to find a particular Wolverine who's like the prime guy for the timeline. So you see, okay, so yeah, you see him and he sees Henry Cavill. Wait, who the, who the hell asked for Henry Cavill as Wolverine? But there's one thing where he goes to a dimension and he sees like a Wolverine who's like, he's a midget. Let's just keep it He's a, a dwarf. So that's obviously poking fun of the facts of people have always said Hugh Jackman is too tall. But first of all, that's against short people. So that's in portis. That's one. Two, no one is asking for um, Tyrion Lann Lannister. No one is asking for a hobbit or a dwarf. Someone is asking for a guy who is not taller than 5'7 or 5'8. Hugh Jackman is like six. Hugh Jackman has been six, six, six foot. We're asking for a guy who is short. Put it this way, Tom Cruise. Someone of Tom Cruise's height. Or Tom Hardy. See, Tom Hardy, Tom Cruise's height, boom. Hugh Jackman is tall like if you saw Hugh Jackman in the street you say oh yeah that's a tall guy like he's a he's a, Hugh Jackman is taller than um Ryan Reynolds so it's not only you didn't only get a guy of like okay rather than average height he is taller than the average bear he's taller that's the issue so my thing though is just get a guy who is five seven five eight some guy that looks that has the body build of a Jack Nicholson or like a freaking Tom Hardy, someone like, someone like that. That's all I'm asking for. So it's all building up to X-Men, man. Um, and look, I think that... Um, the, like, for the MCU to say what's up, because, see, this film is going to be a success. But the key thing about this film's success is it's going to be an R-rated success. So for Kevin Feige, what do you do? Do you make an X-Men film that is PG-13? Or do you ride the wave? And this, this will be the smarter move. You ride the wave of Deadpool success and you make an R-rated X-Men film. And by doing that, you can get into those much more adult themes and the more mature themes that comes with making something like the X-Men. In my view, you ride the wave of Deadpool because Deadpool and Wolverine is going to make crazy money. This, I think this makes a bill. I believe this makes a bill just based off of which, basically, no way home tax. It's no way home tax. This is no way, no way home 2.0. So based off this being no way home 2.0, what you do is you ride that R-rated wave and be like, okay, we're going to make an X-Men film. It's going to be R-rated. It's going to be an R-rated X-Men film. Total recast, unknowns. All unknowns. Because the X-Men brand is, you don't need known names for X-Men. X-Men itself is popular. People are going to come out because it's freaking X-Men. Especially if you're coming off the back of an R-rated Deadpool and it's now in the MCU, boom. So 
you, you already have the brand recognition of X-Men. So what you do is, can you please make Storm tall? Halle Berry is short and she's light-skinned. It is what it is. Dark-skinned, tall, graceful. Wolverine, make him short and stocky. Cyclops, leadership type, taller than Wolverine. Please, thank you. For Gambit, unless you can get someone who, who's better, Channing Tatum has thrown himself into the ring. Rogue, sexy. What did he say? Um, Mr. Sa. Mr. Sa, make Rogue sexy again. Make Rogue sexy again. Um, oh, yeah. Jean Grey, cool. We don't know what we can get from Jean Grey. Beast. So, those are the things. And get Ekman right. And please bring it Bishop. Not that bomb ass trash, that prick. Um, Brand Singer did in um, This is Future Pass. A proper Bishop who's got muscles, is stocky with his huge freaking gun. And is the time traveler we all know. Then if we have that, we can pop off. If we have that, we can pop off. So we can pop off, man. So look, man, I said again, um, the film was cool. The film was, was cool. <laughs> so basically, so, 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 so remember, there's a line who says that, man, and motherfucker's still trying to ice skate up a hill. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> See, so again, remember, this is spoilers. So did they all, all die? So what happened at the very end? When that monster was coming through, did um, Blade, Electra, and Gambit, did they all get killed by that? So I don't I, I wonder what, what happens there. Do you know what's so funny is, remember, that bomb-ass Blade thing is with Mama Mahasha Lily, it's, it's still being remade. I want to know what people's reaction to this is, is going to be. Because what people may say is, if you can't get that trash off the, the ground, man, bring Snipes back. Bring it back. Oh, bro, Blade, wait, 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 he was doing his thing. I was like, he's doing, see, see, my thing though is, remember, he's older now. He is, remember, this, this is 1998. <laughs> this is 1998, what's that? 1920, 22, 22, 22. that's like 25 years ago. It's a freaking, it's a freaking long ass time, time, time ago. So my thing though is, he's old, he's old. So you have to now morph. So, bro, of course I want to see an older blade with gray hairs and everything. Yes, I want to see an older blade. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Snipes is blade. Snipes is blade. It is what it is. Masha Ali is a great actor, he's a superb actor. But when I just saw him back, I'm like, you know what? He's blade. He's blade. Just like, given the right outfits, right costume, presents him as an older blade in that sense. Okay, short out the hairstyle, make him bald, short out the costume, and let's ride. Let's ride. So if you can't get that bum ass thing where it's taking you 3,000 years to get it through, bring back Snipes. Because he is, will always be, and is still the original Blade Man. And that's a fact.